excuse me, I'm a visitor here, I don't live here. <laughs> but I appreciate the last few comments of the panel. Uh, I'm a planner by training and, and profession in the United States. And what you've been describing in terms of a care for sustainability is what we're finally, after 50 years of making mistakes in California, finally coming to realize we need to work on and change the pattern of these residential, we call them satellite, we call them bedroom communities. Um, the big missing piece that never seems to really occur in these is the sense of community and vitality and the mix of uses beyond residential and the uh, mega centers that you're talking about, but everything else is missing. The sense of community, the flavor of the community, the character, the day-to-day -day needs, the fabric that grows normally in an urban center never d seems to develop in these satellite communities. So I agree with the panelists that say that it would probably be half a century or maybe never for that to occur and catch up with itself later. But I do have this question about the, the uh, about Cairo the old Cairo or the original Cairo, I'm not sure what you call it, but is there any successful, uh, notable project or story within Cairo of um, renovation of a downtown neighborhood or an effort to increase or improve the value of the properties or the conditions of the neighborhoods in Cairo? I know there has been you know, a lot of efforts, say by UNESCO or maybe it's USAID in some cases on some of the mosques and the historic buildings. But is there any effort that goes into the neighborhoods themselves? Great. Let me just take another couple of questions. Um, a question that relates to downtown um, and the rent control. Is it true if the, if the rent control actually is removed, um, that would actually better the, the society that exists in downtown when it comes to shop owners and people that live um, in buildings and they've established these homes for like um, a very long time and pass down generation to another, um, would that actually better the, um, the people that are living like the entire downtown and when it comes to infrastructure itself and the restoration of such buildings and so on, would that, would that actually be better or not? Um, I'd like y'all to comment on maybe the universities that have displace themselves and are now outside and especially I'm thinking specifically about AUC and kind of this new co-opting of the university on the square kind of thing. Um, I guess I, I guess I just want to hear comments on that. Great, does anyone want to jump in? Comments? I can't really tell. We hardly have a uh, this is why Miguelna exists, because we don't really have a space to talk about these, these things, and I think it's obvious that we need to be talking about this like almost every day, and so it's really exciting to be here, actually. So, um, okay, so rent control. I think the problem with downtown and the existing city is that you don't have real market values. Um, I mean, a lot of these shops, uh, you might have like four or five shops on one street that are actually, again, kind of like the monopoly that I described, that are ultimately owned by like two brothers or something. And whether one shop sells any underwear today or the other one sells any shoes, it doesn't really matter because they pay like a tiny rent compared to the uh, building owner who doesn't really get much rent anyway. So it depends on the little bit just from the shop. So it's, this is not how markets work. So there's no real, I mean, a month or two can go by with very little money made, but they can still, serve. and that's okay for people to survive, but that's not, a, that's not good for a city to survive. Um, and I think basically what this also creates is that, um, you know, usually in a well, in a vital city, uh, things there's turnover. You know, a business doesn't do well, so it moves on, and somebody else comes and they try a new restaurant or a new shop. And if it doesn't succeed, then it moves on, and this is what keeps it running. And you can't really do this with the current system. Uh, I think that's a problem. I think um, one of the kind of the really glaring absences of our discussion is Cairo's relationship to the rest of Egypt. Uh, we tend to forget that there are a lot of other cities in this country that <laughs> don't receive any of this attention, but they're also, they're, they're being killed slowly. I mean, uh, I think uh, Jane Jacobs has to be translated and made mandatory reading to all, everybody in government because they seem to really be missing the point of how cities survive. Because other cities, if you go outside Cairo, they're actually also going through a lot of uh, problems. 
mainly because of complete negligence. Um, so we can't talk about Cairo's development and growth without realizing the fact that for the last 50 years, Egypt has been centralized almost in a very concerted effort to, and this has become the only place to go and make a living for a lot of people. You know, what if, what if somebody can actually aspire to go to Minya or Ismailia, you know, after college and maybe start their life there? That would be really nice. Uh, and that would generate life in those cities. And, uh, this is not, we don't have the structure to allow for this to happen. Building code, obviously, yes, is needed. Um, and this has been the core of the problem. I just wanted to just make a quick point about water. Uh, to give you an example, uh, the, I'm not sure who asked for about the water. The Minister of Agriculture just last week uh, informed uh, farmers of rice that they need to basically slow it down with the rice farming because rice farming uses a lot of water. Of course, he had nothing to say about golf courses. Nothing. <laughs> this is absolutely outrageous. You know, there's all these golf courses that actually, I don't know what the, this has, there's, you know, numbers for this, uh, but it uses 20 times more water per square meter. Nothing said about this, but you tell the farmers to not um, farm rice. Um, so this is a problem. Um, and then the f other thing is about markets. I think a lot of this does plug into this uh, idea that Egypt needs to be uh, a second tier market for leftover stuff that's made elsewhere. Uh, the first thing that pops up on a new road that's made is a car dealership, so that when you go to the showroom of uh, fantasy, utopia, land, whatever, you can pass by the car dealership and see what kind of deal you can get for your son and daughter. Um, so, uh, you know, you have cars and then the malls that have, you know, stores that are completely irrelevant to this context, and you write, where is, where is all the money coming from? It's coming, a lot of it coming from the Gulf, because a lot of people uh, entire families survive in this country with money being sent from abroad, um, which is maybe you would think people living abroad should have a vote. Um, this is why it's central, and it has to do with, with what's happening inside as far as consumption patterns. Um, but I don't know, I think I forgot a lot. Oh, one really important point I wanted to make about AUC. Um, I recently was uh, in a classroom with students, and I asked them, uh, where is Azhar Park? Nobody had an idea. Um, I actually opened, uh, I turned on a map on the projector screen and I asked them to identify where is the manic. Nobody had an idea. You have to realize that if somebody is 18, 19, freshman, sophomore in AUC, and they've lived in 6th of October, they get on the ring road with a driver, or maybe you know, they'll drive themselves, uh, and go to campus, they've never had to go probably to downtown, to Zemeric, because of the cultural baggage that's been associated with these places as places to avoid, stay away, most of the family has moved out over time. People don't know their own city, and I think this is really terrible, because if we're talking about a new generation of influential people, because if this is the way it works, we're talking about people with money being the most influential in society, who have no cultural association with place, um, this has very, I mean, disastrous effects on the future, I think. And places that we have who might, that, which might be successful, relatively, um, also fail at a very important front, which is they're not pedestrian friendly. Cairo has been a very pedestrian city for a very long time. My family members who live in Rehab, they have to get in the car just to go to the Starbucks. You know, they can't just walk to the Starbucks because it's the way it's planned. Yeah, but I have news for you. All of Cairo is not pedestrian. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, but this I, I mean, my point is, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk to you yeah. I can't believe I'm defending satellite cities. <laughs> <laughs> but I just Someone. need to say that um, I feel that there is a kind of disenfranchisement of the of the residents of satellite cities in this conversation and in those photographs because you don't see them. Well, this and that annoys me. You know what I mean? That's true. They could be off I don't care. But they need to have a voice if we're discussing a place where people live. But well, they're not here. That's, that's part of the problem. Yeah. They're well, they, they not here. Come down down. They're, they're, here. Here. they're out of the city. Raise your hands for people who do not can live can in, the, in, the, in the, the center. You live in Shiru. You live in Shiru, right? Who else does? I mean, they are here. So they have voices. They're speaking. <laughs> okay, so just a quick point. Now, when this is important because, yeah, we're talking about huge sums of government money that's supposedly for all Egyptians growing into a particular segment of society who 
have actually given up the right to have representation in government because when you live in Rihab, you don't go to government to fix your water. You go to the, the government of Rihab. It's a company. And, and this is a problem. You're actually giving up your citizenship in a way, partly, partly by allowing a company to run where you live because you have, the government has no say inside the borders of Rihab. This is a huge problem. Municipality doesn't, isn't completely irrelevant as a system once we go outside the ring road. Can I add something very quickly, which is just on, on that particular note, um, one of the things we address in the essay is um, that exact point of what kind of urban spaces facilitate political change, what you often get in some of these gated compounds and in developments like Katamea Heights is um, what an academic called Eric Dennis has called you know, privatised democracy. People get to vote on which day of the week their trash is uh, picked up. People get to vote on you know, exactly whether it should be an alpha market or a metro market that's opened up uh, you know, next to the central Starbucks. I don't think they have a choice about Starbucks. It's always Starbucks. Um, but the point is that, as you're saying, they basically are, um, you say that they're, they're disenfranchised from this conversation, and I, and I do respect that, and it's good to hear that alternative voice. But they're also disenfranchising themselves from, from the state and from municipal models of, 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 of government and of engagement with Egypt as a polity and as a society. And for that reason, uh, that helps suck the oxygen out of the desire for political change, because if this is the social elite, if these are the people with the money and consequently the most influence, and they're not socially engaged, either visually with you know the, the rest of Egyptian society around them, if they're just traveling from 6th October to New Cairo each day by car, but also in terms of if I have a problem and no one's picking up my rubbish each day, and I live in downtown Cairo, I, you know, I'll ask the Zabalin guy and I'll get angrier and I'll think, what's wrong with this country? You know, why, why is the government not providing these basic services properly? But if, you're, if the person you go to to get that sorted is Sobic or Palm Hills, where is your engagement with society? Where is your engagement with Egypt as a, as a political structure? And I think that's one of the biggest dangers in terms of kind of privatised democracy, and which is, yeah, one of the I didn't mean to stop to cut you off, but I just wanted to make, make that point. Um, do we want to, do, do any of you guys want to jump yeah, into some of the so far? Then we'll, yeah. take, we'll take another round of questions. Yeah, I just wanted to, to comment on the, uh, your comment uh, regarding letting uh, those people pay for their water and their rent and the <coughs> land that they've acquired. But it's not that easy.